Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are talking about when in doubt about divorce, when in doubt about divorce. Some of you all have come across many of my audios that deal with issues related to relationships, and now you are thinking about divorce or even planning on divorcing your partners. There are others who are not even entertaining the thought of divorce, but they do choose to remain in a emotionally as well as physically abusive relationship. So we are going to talk about some things dealing with divorce. And of course, this will be from a spiritual perspective. Matthew 5, 31 and 32 says, It has been said anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. So let's stop right there. If you have a partner who has already talked about divorcing, separating, or has even done or said some things that you know that you know this partner doesn't want to remain married to you, that one should be giving you a certificate of divorce. The problem is, is that a lot of people like to talk about how they don't want to be with their partners, but then they don't back it up. And that's because they are in doubt. They really don't want to divorce. But if you know that you have had enough, enough of the drama, enough of the abuse, enough of someone threatening to divorce you, then you might end up being put in the position of giving your partner a certificate of divorce. So even though the scripture says anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. Nowadays, a lot of women are giving their husbands a certificate of divorce. Okay. Remember the time frame at which Jesus showed up. It was when men were initiating a lot of things. Men were governing the households. Men were uh, doing uh a lot and the women were pretty much at home and they were taking care of the children and they had a lot of responsibilities too, but they were not active uh, in government. They were not um, doing the types of things that women are doing nowadays. Okay. So of course we pray and we ask the Lord to guide us. We don't just up and do things. We make sure that there's enough evidence to show that this is definitely a toxic relationship. And if you were unequally yoked from the start and this person has still not been won over to Christ, then it is safe to say that you are in a relationship that is unequally yoked and you are going to need to do the necessary things to break free. Now, in verse 32 of Matthew 5, it says, But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So this right here is plain. I know as much as we like to just take the scripture and put a spin on it so that we look okay. We look all right. It is what it is. Okay. And this is why we ask God for his grace, for his mercy, uh, and all of that, because some of us went on and did some things that, uh, was ungodly in marriage, outside of marriage and so forth. Okay. Now, Mark 10, 2 through 12 says, some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Now, let's just stop right there. At that particular time, there was quite a bit of things going on when it came to women and uh, men. And one of the things men were doing was they were divorcing women for just about anything. And then when Jesus came along, he made it more specific. Okay, so that's where the sexual immorality and the adultery and so forth uh, comes into play. And the men, as well as the women, um, were uh, getting out of those uh, relationships. But some men, they were just saying, listen, this woman isn't doing this, that, and the other for me, and I'm giving her a certificate of divorce. So this is where people end up having to uh, 
look at what the scriptures say because sometimes we do have these individuals who I I just don't like her. She said something wrong to me the other day. I don't like him because he raised his voice. Maybe I should consider divorcing him. Uh, so sometimes our minds can run away with us and other times our minds aren't running away from us. We know that the situations that we're in are not biblically sound. They are not uh, God fearing. There is a lot of uh, deceit. There is uh, some sneaky behavior. People are not connected or attracted or unequally yoked. There's a lot going on. And so this is why all of these issues show up when it comes to divorce. Should I or shouldn't I? Well, once again, if there's enough evidence that shows that you are bound in such a way where you can't move right or left, um, that your life is completely annihilated as a result of this individual, do you really need someone to tell you you should divorce? So God, he gave us some sense. We know when we're ready and we know when we're not ready. And if there's a lot of doubt going on, then you need to stand down. Don't put the divorce papers in until you know that you know. When I divorced, I knew that I knew. And there was enough evidence to show that, yes, there should have been a certificate of divorce a long time ago. Okay. Sexual immorality, adultery. These are serious issues. Okay. Okay. And people don't forgive at times in in uh, situations like that. Um, some will say that they forgive, but then they will fight you tooth and nail. OK, so if you know that somebody has cheated on you and you know that you can't trust that person and you are constantly berating him or her about where they have been and who they see and all of that, uh, it's safe to say it's time to get a divorce. Nobody should have to live under all sorts of pressure and tension because someone has said no uh, -uh in so many ways. I cannot forgive you for what you have done to me. Verse three, Mark 10. What did Moses command you? He replied. They said Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. Verse five. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law. Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father. Listen to this. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. Right there, there's a problem for some people because they haven't left their fathers and mothers. And this is why they continue to have problems in their relationship. It's still about mom. It's still about father. So they're in violation of scripture. So. There isn't any wonder why, once again, someone is considering on divorcing. And this may be the freedom that you need because this individual chooses to draw near to mom and dad and forget you and listen to what daddy says and think about what mama has told him or her. And now what they have said and what they have done is affecting the marriage. Well, Time to go. Sometimes fathers don't want sons, unfortunately, to be happy because they're not happy. Some mothers have not wanted daughters to be happy because they're not happy. I want you to be close to me. I want your money coming in the mail. <laughs> I want you showing up and being there for me. So some of these selfish mothers and fathers, they're not going to let go because they have their own hidden agendas. And when you're on the outside looking in, you can see this sort of thing. And so should a partner stay caught up in a threesome so to speak with mom father or mother-in-law father-in-law and a partner that's too much and that's why some people are divorced to this day hallelujah thank you jesus i'm out right too much mom involved too much dad involved but at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. When it's spiritual, that's the way it's supposed to be. When it's of God, that's the way it's supposed to be. When it's of the world and fleshly desires have taken over, it's a mess. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. If God joined you together, no one can separate that. But if God hasn't joined you, well... Look around. That's why there's issues. So what? We're supposed to just remain in foolishness? Uh, I beg to differ. If someone is so just 
stressed and constantly having all sorts of emotional and physical problems as a result of a toxic marriage, get a certificate of divorce. I mean, I'm not going to sit up here and tell people to remain in situations where emotionally and physically they are just going through much. Now, if you want someone to sing praises on some foolishness, there's plenty of people out here on the Internet that will do just that. Stay with them. Well, what about the father and the mother? And he doesn't want to change. And he's always defending his mother and father. And he tells me that his mother said this and his father said that. And uh, OK. And the people just go right along and say, well, God hates divorce. God didn't raise any fools either. <laughs> so. And once again, if this relationship, if this relationship, it has been proven over and over again that God has not joined these people together. Why are we portioning them together? Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. But if God hasn't joined them, then and sometimes people, they got married under false pretenses. Others have gotten married uh, under, unfortunately, Satan connections, satanic toxic messed up sort of reasons and if they sit down long enough and go back to so-called the good old days they'll find out that the relationship was never meant to be and this is why some people will suddenly have this eye-opening experience you know what now that i think about it i should never marry them so then why are you staying in this situation well because i love them well so love allows you to be beaten mistreated disrespected and all of that oh okay well, if that's your definition, if that's what you choose to do, then you remain in it. But you don't put your dysfunction onto other people. Well, I didn't consider it to be dysfunctional to love someone. No, what makes it dysfunctional is when you allow someone to use and abuse you. That's what makes it dysfunctional. But quality relationships, they don't worry about people emotionally and physically abusing them. Quality relationships are just what they are. Now, some people, they stay in relationships because they feel obligated to take care of a partner because of those vows. For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. So because you took those sorts of vows, you feel that you need to adhere to those. You need to stick to them. Well, nowadays, vows have changed and some of them are not like that. So binding like that. Okay. There is a way to get out, and those of you all who have sought what those ways are, you and God had your personal connection, personal relationship, and you know that you know that's why you're free or you're on your way to freedom. Others, they put themselves in binding contracts, binding vows, binding situations, and so they have to stay in that because that's what they chose, okay? When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. And that was, of course, therefore what God has joined together. Let no one separate. He answered, anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. So that's how he answered it. This is one of those things where you got men who have done this over and over again. When he tells you that he has married and remarried and remarried some more, you got to know that there's something wrong. Point blank and simple. There's something wrong. I didn't say he was wrong. I just said there's something wrong because I know how people like to play around with words. So if you want to get mixed up in that sort of arrangement, then by all means you do it. And then if you don't, then you stay away from it. Okay. Verse 12. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. Okay. So we can't play around with the scriptures. We know that if we have remarried, we already know what we've done. That's why we ask God for his grace and his mercy. And we ask God for his blood covering. And sometimes people remarry because they believe it's going to be better. And it does. Uh, it does get better at times. But then you also run into the same issues from the last relationship. It shows up in a new relationship. And then you say to yourself, I should have never even got married to begin with. Remember, God doesn't put any more on us than we can bear, but we sure can. Luke 16 and 18, anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery. And the man who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Okay. First Corinthians 739, a woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives. Did you hear that? 
Once again, a woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives. Sounds like a little bit of bondage, right? Mm Mm-hmm. It makes you think, was marriage a good idea from the start? A woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, and this is why some of you all, you don't feel moved to get a divorce. You may think about it, but you don't really feel moved to do it because of this scripture right here. But if her husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, but he must belong to the Lord. So you are in this because as morbid as it sounds, you're waiting for death death of a partner that's what's going to free you and then some of you are a death of a partner is going to take place and you went through so much in this marriage that you're not interested in getting married to anyone but but if you should want to get married she is free to marry anyone she wishes but he must belong to the lord he must belong to the lord he must belong to the lord how do you know that you've got to look at the evidence you've got to look at that fruit on his tree you've got to compare scriptures to his modern day lifestyle you got to look at him, dude, in a whole new way, in a way that you probably didn't look at your um, current partner. It's going to be one of those things where if he is not walking with the Lord like he's supposed to, it's going to be more drama, probably even worse that next marriage. But that's why some women, they're not going to uh, divorce because they are bound to this thought that. I am not going to be free unless my husband passes away. I'm not judging anybody. You deal with all of what comes with him while he is on this planet. And you just might pass away before him due to all the stress. Ephesians 5.33 However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect her husband. Now, some of this isn't going on in relationships. So, once again, this is why people think about divorce. Because... He's not loving his wife, okay? He doesn't even love himself. And the wife, she sees that she's not loved, so she's disrespectful toward her husband. How long are we supposed to stay in situations like this? Okay? And eventually what happens? Somebody cheats, and then there you have it. You got your grounds for divorce. Because if he doesn't love her, he is going to eventually stray away and do some things, whether emotionally or physically. Cheating is cheating. You can be able to get a divorce. Matthew nineteen six and 7. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Once again, it's reiterated. Verse 7 says, Why then they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Romans 7, 2, and 3. For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But, once again, if her husband dies, she is released from the law that binds her to him. Okay? She is released. All these women walking around here, they're free. Their husband's long passed away. Okay? and Or is dying even, and they still wear those rings. Because they have refused to let go. And when you see a woman still wearing a ring and her husband has passed away, you don't want to get mixed up with her either because she's emotionally attached to him, even though he's six feet deep. Do you want to go through all of that drama? I don't think so. (laughs) So, So then if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive, listen to this. She's called an adulteress. So some of you all, you had sexual relations with with another man and you feel guilty. So that's why you're staying. Well, actually, the sexual relations uh, freed you so you can go ahead and get that divorce. You don't need to keep contemplating whether or not you should have a should get a divorce or not. You know, back in 1980, 1999, 19, whatever, 2000, whatever, you cheated on your husband. So all of this stuff that you're putting yourself through, you're free. Okay, you're free. You had sexual relations with another man. You didn't go around telling anybody. Your husband still don't know, but you can get up out of that relationship. Okay. Sexual relationship. uh, So then if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive, which some of these women did, but they're just covering it up. She is called an adulteress. So the adulteress is trying to remain in a relationship with a husband who clearly is showing that he does not love her and she is being very disrespectful of him what gives really what gives but if her husband dies she is released from that law and is not an adulteress if she marries another man so if he dies you're free even though you cheated on him 
Deuteronomy 22, 19. Uh, they shall find him a hundred shekels of silver. This is the way it was back in the day. And give them to the young woman's father because this man has given an Israelite virgin a bad name. She shall continue to be his wife. He must not divorce her as long as he lives. This is the way it was back in the day. <laughs> so nowadays, that's some there's there's freedom. There's freedom because you don't feel obligated um, as a result of money. OK, there's freedom because you don't have to be concerned about. Oh, well, he, uh, he called me a name or she was calling me names and all this, but I'm still going to be married to her and. Once again, you don't have to put yourself in these situations of bondage. That's why we go to the Lord and we say, Lord, I need some freedom. OK, is there a, a clause or some little addendum or something to get me up out of this mess? OK, and I've gone to the Lord and I've talked to him about these sorts of things. Jeremiah 3, 1, if a man divorces his wife and she leaves him and marries another man, should he return to her again? Now we get some of these people who reconcile, right? They divorced their partners, left them, went on, married somebody else, but then turn around and want to get back with that person again. Listen to what the scripture says. Would, would not the land be completely defiled? But you have lived as a prostitute with many lovers. Would you now return to me, declares the Lord? So God, he made it personal. You want to go out here? You want to mess around with somebody else? You're doing all this stuff intimately with them. Now you want to come and marry me? Some people can't shake that. Okay. They're thinking about it. They're just envisioning it it's disturbing for some of them and this is why their relationships don't work out either because some of them haven't even married the women yet and they're already thinking about he, she was with all these men and then once they do marry then they think about she was with all these men and then they become quite rude and mean and nasty you can get up out of a relationship like that if he's been throwing it in your face about how you've been with this man and that one. You can get out of a relationship where he's been with a whole lot of women and you can't seem to shake that either. Malachi 2.16, the man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel does violence to the one he should protect, says the Lord Almighty. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. Matthew 1 19 because Joseph her husband was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace he had in mind to divorce her quietly now this was Joseph uh, thinking about uh, doing away with Mary because Mary had uh, become pregnant and he knew and he knew he didn't he didn't uh, father that child okay we know that that child was an offspring of the one the true God who implanted that seed in her but Joseph didn't know all that. And some of uh, some men, they stayed with women who had been impregnated by other men. And sometimes some men realize that they can't handle that either. And so they start acting very mean spirited toward the woman. You mess with that other man. I'm taking care of your baby that you had with someone else. And then blah, 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 blah. OK, does somebody really need to stay in that kind of bondage? Some men, they start off okay with things and then their minds start to run away with them, just like with women. You had a baby by another woman and here this baby comes over here and I see her face and you cheated on me and okay, this is too much. You'd be better off alone. Some men, they say, well, I remember what the scripture says. Well, there was some cheating that went on and maybe there wasn't or maybe there was something that took place with somebody else, but you can't handle it. We got to go back to that. If you can't handle it, then what are you in doubt about? Why hurt somebody behind all of this stuff that you really can't put up with? First Corinthians seven eleven through 13. But if she does, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband and a husband must not divorce his wife. To the rest, I say this. I, not the Lord, if any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. Right. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. So if these people are willing to live with you, they're willing to work things out. They're willing to do whatever it takes to make this relationship work. Then, no, you don't get a divorce. But if this person is unwilling and you see the writing on the wall and they're being so mean spirited, then why would you stick around? They are clearly showing you that they're not willing. OK. 
Some of us, we've seen this over and over again. And then finally we said, no, nope, this man is not willing to live with me. So I got to get the necessary paperwork together. This woman, she has told me repeatedly, she don't like me, love me, don't want to be with me. That is unwillingness. <laughs> what more do you need? Well, I'm not ready to give him up. Quit being selfish. He's ready to give you up. Jeremiah 3.8, I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce. Faithless, right? I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. Yet I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery. And some of you all, you tell your sisters and your brothers and everybody else what you're up to. And they say, mm, man, you nothing but a player. Or, ooh, you just cheating on your husband left and right. Looking at them men, lusting after them men. Well, I didn't have sex, but still, you want to be with that one or you want to be with this one. And you're teaching these people that it's okay and it's all right. Well, I'm still married. Doesn't matter. You're acting like faithless Israel. And God gave her a certificate of divorce and sent her away. And that's what's going to happen with some of these people in this network. They keep doing things and then they want God to co-sign on them and God's not doing it. Isaiah 51. This is what the Lord says. Where's your mother's certificate of divorce with which I sent her away? So who said God didn't send people away? He sends them away. Where's your mother's certificate of divorce with which I sent her away or to which of my creditors did I sell you because of your sins? You were sold because of your transgressions. Your mother was sent away. So all this talk about the God, he hates divorce. Yes, he does. But don't say that God doesn't put people up to divorce in others because you are in error. God will do this sort of thing, especially when he sees that people are faithless, especially when he sees that people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing according to his will so remember we don't serve a weak god deuteronomy 24 1 through 4 if a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing to him because he finds something indecent about her okay he found something indecent about his woman and he writes her a certificate of divorce give it to her and send her from his house okay so if the woman doesn't want to make the move, the man, he may. And if after she leaves his house, she becomes the wife of another man and her second husband dislikes her and writes her a certificate of divorce, give it to her and send her from his house. OK, that's what happened to some people. They're on their third marriage and it's still not working. You got to know something's not right. Why waste people's lives trying to make something happen, make something work that is not working? And if anything, the best advice is to stop getting married. It didn't work with the first one. It didn't work with the second one. Now here comes a third one. It's still not working. Enjoy your freedom. Enjoy your singlehood. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Then her first husband who divorced her is not allowed to marry her again after she has been defiled. You see, she's been defiled, the scripture says. That would be detestable in the eyes of the Lord. And I know some people who did just that. Do not bring sin upon the land the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance. So when that ex shows up talking about he still wants you or she still wants you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Matthew 19, 8. And nine, Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard, but it was not his this way from the beginning. You see, it wasn't this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another woman commits adultery. You heard it once again. Hebrews 13, 4, marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. So the marriage bed was not kept pure. He said he wanted to have a threesome. She said she wanted to have her own whatever, whatever, right? Without being specific. So everybody starts messing around, doing all sorts of things. The marriage bed is not pure. So you can go ahead and get your certificate of divorce. You don't need to stick around. I don't care if it was back in 1990, whatever, when y'all did whatever you did. Now you got all these problems. You don't need to stick it out. Okay. Those that are in doubt. Once again, you have enough evidence 
in this particular message to go ahead and get a divorce. Now, if you choose to remain in the relationship because you are unwilling to leave, then go ahead on and suffer the consequences, suffer whatever you've been suffering. OK, but when you come across a channel like this, we are about freedom. OK, so. I don't talk people into staying in binding situations. Those of you all who have followed, followed me a long time, you know this because God did not talk me into staying in binding situations. um 10 years ago. He didn't. Okay. He told me to get free. And so I've been free. And as a result of my freedom, I've been sharing uh, these messages because I want other people to be free. I want other people to be free from toxic family situations, mothers and fathers who are controlling their sons and daughters, your in-laws all up in your business. I want you to be free of that. I want you to be free of, uh, these situations where you have been sexually immoral, you and your partner were doing all sorts of things. Now you two resent each other. Why is everybody still dealing with this foolishness? Okay. Why is it that people are being disrespectful and emotionally abusive and physically abusive? Some of you others, you can't tolerate the mental illness that is going on with your partners. OK, you can't stand it. It's driving you batty. Seek out the support group. And while you're at it, talk to an attorney to find out what your rights are. Uh, some of you others, you can't tolerate what is going on since you've had kids with this individual. OK, so. It's time to reconsider whether or not you want to be with this person, especially if you know that they've emotionally as well as physically cheated on you. You might have to do some research just to make sure. OK, you don't want to just assume people are doing things when that is not correct. Then you got some who now that children are adult sons, adult daughters, they're saying, OK, I'm free now. I'm free mentally, physically and spiritually from you. I'm getting the divorce. OK, because they tolerated more than enough over the years. They tolerated the cheating, the drunkenness. They tolerated the sneaky behavior, the lies. They tolerated the mood swings. They tolerated the mental illness. They tolerated so much stuff. And now they have said enough is enough. And God is not once again going to keep you in any type of binding situations. But people who are selfish, people who um, like to use scripture to control other people will. People who uh, have their own special interests, other people who want to project their issues onto you, they will keep you in binding situations. That's why you have to be mindful of the people that you're talking to. Some of you all need to stop talking to folks about your relationship woes. Just stop it because they're going to convince you to stay if they love that man. If that man has put some money in their pocket or you have done whatever for whoever, they are going to say, you should stay. Oh, my goodness. I don't want you two to break up. You guys make such a happy couple. You look so good together. Please, <laughs> please. Those things are nothing when you're going through a lot. OK, they don't have to live with what you're living with. OK, so. You know what you're supposed to be doing. And those of you all who I just can't see myself without him, then stay in it. Just don't go around complaining to people or going on these audio messages talking about what should I do. OK, because you've already made up in your mind what you want to do. You want to stay or giving the illusion as if you want to do something when you know you just want to be with that man and you willing to do anything and everything for him. OK, so don't. Don't put on airs as if you're ready to leave when you know that you are still connected to all the emotional and physical stuff. We are ready to help people who are ready to help themselves. We are ready to get God on board. We are not ready to uh, go along with people's dysfunctional programming from an abusive person. That's what we're not going to do. OK, so I thank you, as always, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube in um, Enterprise 7. To God be the glory. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. Blessings to you.